My name's Alex Matisse. And my name is John Viglin, and we're the owners of East Fork Pottery. So our clay comes from Star, North Carolina, down in the Piedmont. We wanted it to be durable, to showcase our glaze as well, to celebrate and showcase the vernacular, the literal terroir of, of North Carolina. It's all handmade. The clay is 100% North Carolina clay. You can see that in the finished product as the iron spots come out in sort of a very random pattern. When we started, it was a completely different model. We were making pots to sell to a very loyal collector. It wasn't scalable. They were buying individual pieces. We gradually started to realize that we had to change something. And right now we're somewhere in between what was this artist studio and where we're going, which is more of a, a small pottery factory. You know, one of the things that really got me excited about pottery in the first place was not only its function, but also the extent to which it was product. We wanted to create a standardized product that we could use to approach different markets, but we wanted to retain that handmade flavor that the wood kiln pots have. Firing work in the wood kiln, the timelines are really long because you've got about four months between each firing. And, and it just doesn't work when you're dealing with a company like Calvin Klein. We did get them some beautiful pots that were fired in the wood kiln and they looked amazing on Madison Avenue. The Blau is the kiln that we bought from the Netherlands. It produces a standardized product. It's completely computerized. It's fired with propane, very efficient, very fast. It's the Tesla to the Conestoga wagon that is the wood kiln. We'll now have the tools to approach restaurants and, and retailers nationally to try to, to place the product. Neither John or I have formal training in a business sense. We're, we're learning this on the fly. I feel like I've taken on the role of the pragmatic conservative and then Alex is good at pushing the, the bigger dreams. Early on in Alex and I's partnership, uh, it, it became clear that there was a lot of accounting and record keeping and bookkeeping that needed to be done, and I thought that I could probably figure it out. And so it's been this organic self-teaching opportunity. You know, my 16-year-old self who thought I was gonna be this avant-garde artist is probably kind of sneering at my present self for like getting excited about spreadsheets and <laughs> getting payroll tax remitted on time and all that. But it's a useful skill and you need it for running this business and so I've kind of naturally stepped into the role and we haven't gotten shut down by the IRS yet so <laughs> yeah. So to really be looking at this as a business and operating it as a business is such a change from us just being up at the end of the road making pots, selling what we sell and just proceeding in that mode. There's a lot more strategy behind everything. We have kind of roadmaps that are leading the way and a huge amount of planning that goes into it and there is an art in that. I think that people don't necessarily see there's an art in running a business. People ask us, why aren't you making your art? When are you gonna go back to making your art? And my response is simply that if whatever you do, you do it with passion, devotion, and intention, whatever it is that is your art.